Now that we know what arrays are, what we need to look at is how arrays created. And so the syntax for an array in Java, it starts with first you have the data type. The data type for our array is going to be an integer and then you put brackets, empty set of brackets right after the data type. The second thing that you do is you put the variable name. The variable name can be anything but hopefully it has something to do with what is being stored currently inside of the array. Next we have the keyword new and what new does is says okay I'm gonna go find some memory and I'm gonna allocate it and how big is that going to be? It's going to be to the length of 10 and it's going to be of the data type integer. So this side is actually allocating memory this is the length, again this is the data type. This syntax should look familiar to you as it is very similar to the way you create an object. So you have the data type, bracket, variable name, equals new, allocating memory, int, and then the length of the array. Now when you create an array it does not leave it open. It does not just say okay I have this memory, but what it does is it says I'm going to put something inside of that memory. And in the case of the integer data type, what it puts inside of there are zeros. Later, we're going to be talking about what happens for a boolean, what happens for a char, what happens for a double. Be aware that when an array is constructed, Java will automatically put in something equaling zero in some way. All right, now, the last syntax is not the only way to construct an array. You can see from this slide that its front end is exactly the same. You have the data type, you have the brackets, and you have your variable name. What's different is this side right here. And what this side includes are hard-coded values. Notice that you start with a brace and end with a brace. These are not parentheses and these are not brackets. So make sure you're using a curly brace before and after. And then inside of it, you're putting the values that you want to store in each slot of the array. So I just did 1, 2, 3, all the way up to 10. And you can see down here, this is what it would look like in memory. 1, 2, 3, 4. First slot, which is slot 0, you're going to have a 1. In the second slot, you're going to have a 2, so on and so forth. When you're creating arrays, you can place brackets in different places. The preferred Java syntax, and what I'm going to be using for these videos, is to put the bracket after the data type. But some people have moved in from C and C++, and this is the way that it used to be for Java's predecessors to put it after the variable name instead of after the data type. And then someone came along and said, well, why don't we combine the two and make everyone happy? Of course, when you try to do that, you usually make everyone unhappy. So no one really uses this one down here, and I would not suggest using it. I would suggest using the preferred Java syntax, which is putting it after the data type, but it will work to put it after the variable. As I said in the first slide, every data type, when you create a, a quote-unquote empty array, has information inside of it. So this array right here, it has 10 slots, and it's going to, like I said, the integer data type would put 0 inside of that array. This array right here is a double array, so you could probably guess what it's going to be. It's going to be 0, 0.0. So if you pulled something out of the array and displayed it on the screen, you would see 0.0. .0. The next type of array would be a Boolean array. A Boolean array with 10 values, uh, you have a 50% chance of getting it right, so let's see. The values are false. Later, if you wanted to make them all true, you'd have to go into each slot and make them true. But the default values when a Boolean array is constructed is the value false. The character array scores is kind of interesting because what it puts inside of it is a space. If you tried to print out the space or the, the value inside of the array, you would not see anything. You kind of have to do something or show something before and after it to prove that there is a space inside of it. But that is the default value inside of character array. The last data type that we're going to look at is a string. The default value for a string array is null. And what null means, it's a keyword inside of Java meaning nothing. Because strings are objects or any kind of object that you would try to create an array of and you don't put any values in, it would have this value null, which is the equivalent of 0, 0, 0, .0 or just pretty much saying nothing. There's nothing inside of there right now. It's just an object's way of saying nothing.
To wrap up this video, what I would like you to know are the two ways to construct an array. The first one here constructs an array and it just creates 10 slots with 10 zeros inside of it because it's an integer array. Or you can have an array you put hard-coded values into. You can set the values and the computer will figure out what the length is just by counting what you put inside of it. So those are the two options for creating an array and then also realize that every time you create an array even if you don't say what values are going to be inside of there the computer will put some default value inside of there whether it's a zero whether it's null whether it's false depending on the data type